We're going to open our meeting with uh, a quiet time and follow it with the set-aside prayer. God, please help me set aside everything I think I know about myself, the 12 steps, the big book, the meetings, my disease, and you, God, so I may have an open mind and a new experience with all these things. Please let me see the truth. Amen. Thank you. During this session, we will spend much of our time sharing the results of our two-way communication with the God of our understanding. The 11th step reads, Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Now, even though we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of a higher power, in step three, it doesn't mean that we simply reach a comfortable plateau in our level of spirituality and remain there indefinitely. Our connection with our higher power must be tended to on a regular basis, much the same way a garden needs constant attention in order to flourish. If we neglect our garden and deprive it of sunshine, water, and nourishment, and let weeds take over, soon our plants will wither and die. There'll be no garden to enjoy just dead plants and dirt. Now, if we neglect prayer and meditation, soon our character defects take over like weeds, and we find ourselves living in conflict with everyone and everything once again. Our very spirits wither and die. So if we desire to live in harmony and peace in this world, we must continue to grow spiritually. Spiritual growth requires us to improve our conscious contact with our higher power, and we achieve that through daily prayer and meditation. Now we're going to examine prayer and meditation in more detail. Prayer is talking to God, and meditation is listening to God. We listen in order to receive directions from the one who has all power. When we ask God for direction and strength, we are calling upon the spirit of the universe for the guidance and power to overcome our difficulties. In other words, when God guides, God provides. When we seek God's guidance, we find a new power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction beyond our wildest dreams. As we'll learn, our higher power speaks directly to us through inspiration, an intuitive thought, or a decision. When we ask specific questions, we receive specific answers. That's why it's so important to test the responses we receive. Now, if you're having a difficulty or having a problem or some kind of hurdle to overcome, this is a time when you ask specifically for guidance. And keep in mind also that, that problems are necessary in, for our spiritual growth. If we don't have any kind of obstacles or challenges in our life, we have no need for a higher power. If everything goes my way, I don't need a higher power, do I? But we need guidance, and this is the time that we ask for guidance during our prayer and our meditation. Now, the dictionary tells us that to guide means to lead, direct, influence, or regulate. Two synonyms are to disclose and to show. Meditation is based on the belief that our higher power speaks to those who are willing to listen. We write down the thoughts, images, sounds, and feelings we receive. This is one of the things that we can do. Then we take action on the guidance that comes from infinite God rather than our finite selves. Otherwise, it just remains theory if we're not taking any action. Now, how do we determine the source of our guidance? Once again, we use the test we described back in step four, which is the AA test for self-will, where we test against honesty, unselfishness, love, and purity. Now, we use the same test for what we, we write on paper. We just go over it during our quiet times and see what we've written down. Now, when we look in the big book for passages that refer to guidance, we find that there are 
There are at least 20 of them. Every time the book says we ask God, it indicates reference to prayer. We have been reading about two-way prayer throughout the book. Now it's time to listen, to learn to listen to our higher power. Now, beginning on the last two lines of page 85, we are advised to conduct an 11th step on a regular basis. It says, step 11 suggests prayer and meditation. We shouldn't be shy on this matter of prayer. Better men than we are using it constantly. It works if we have the proper attitude and work at it. It would be easy to be vague about this matter, yet we believe we can make some definite and valuable suggestions. Of course, there are countless ways to pray and meditate. However, they do suggest that we try following these instructions on how to practice two-way prayer. At night, we review the day's activities. The directions start the next line down. It says, when we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves that should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we have done better? Were we thinking of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking of what we could do for others? Or what we could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, for that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. This paragraph contains the fourth reference to the AA test for self-will. Nevertheless, it's still the opposite of the test for God's will based on the four absolutes. We use the same test during our morning meditation to check our guidance. In the next paragraph, we're provided with directions for conducting a morning quiet time. It says, on awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. We consider our plans for the day. Before we begin... We ask God to direct our thinking, especially asking that it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, or self-seeking motives. Under these conditions, we we can employ our mental faculties with assurance. After all, God gave us brains to use. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. Now let's look at the sentence beginning with, Before we begin, we ask God to direct our thinking. These words are very important. Before we begin. Before we begin what? Before we begin listening to God. How do we know we're supposed to listen to God? Because right afterward it says, We ask God to direct our thinking. Remember, our thinking is not always okay. We're asking God to direct our thinking. So doesn't it stand to reason that our next thoughts are going to be from our higher power? Makes sense, doesn't it? Now what do we do with these thoughts? We write them down. Now we're pretty good at forgetting things, so we think it's important to write things down so we can follow on the guidance. In the third paragraph on page 86, we're told our higher power will provide us with the answers to all our questions. It is essential that we sit quietly, especially during periods of stress or uncertainty, so we can clearly hear what God has to say. You mean I don't freak out when I'm going down the road the wrong way on the one-way street like we did when I was in Boston? (laughs) No, you're not allowed to head for the hills. Sit quietly. Try to sit quietly. It says, in thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for inspiration an intuitive thought, or a decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We are often surprised how the right answers come after we have tried this for a while. So God is going to speak to us through inspiration, an intuitive thought, or a decision. If the one who has all power, if the one who has all power is going to supply us with the right answers, wouldn't it be a good idea to jot them down so we don't forget them? Our early AA pioneers constantly wrote down the guidance and direction they received during their quiet time, like Brian spoke about earlier. They found it very effective. With time and practice, we will begin to trust our vital sixth sense, our God consciousness. 
Now go to the first sentence on the next page, please. It says, what used to be a hunch or the occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Being still inexperienced and having just made conscious contact with God, it is not probable that we're going to be inspired at all times. We might pray... We might pay for this presumption in all sorts of observed actions and ideas. Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on a plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. Dependence on a higher power, we, become, we come to rely upon it. To protect ourselves from absurd actions and ideas, and you can be sure they will crop up on occasion, we test our thoughts with the four standards of honesty, unselfishness, purity, and love. We end our morning prayer and meditation by asking our higher power to show us all day long what to do and how to do it. In the next paragraph, we are urged to pray. We usually conclude that period of meditation with the prayer that we be, sh that we be shown all through the day what our next step is to be. They've been given whatever we need to need to to take care of whatever we need to to take care of such problems we ask especially from freedom from self-will and are careful to make no requests for ourselves only we may ask for ourselves however if others will be helped we are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends many of us wasted a lot of time doing that and you can use and it doesn't work you can easily see why now keep in mind that it's okay to pray for ourselves as long as it isn't selfish you know, if we have, it's a, like we don't want to pray for the, winning the lottery, but there's nothing wrong with praying for financial stability. There's a big difference, you know, without being greedy. We can pray for a good night's sleep, you know. We can pray to be of maximum service to our higher power. There are many good things that we can pray for for ourselves. Just check it against the four absolutes, and then you know whether it's, whether it's uh, good or not. Now we're going to go to the next paragraph, and here it's suggested that we take a quiet time every time we're troubled or confused. We relax and listen for guidance and direction. As we go through the day, we pause when agitated or doubtful and ask for the right thought or action. We are constantly reminding ourselves we are no longer running the show. Humbly saying to ourselves many times each day, Thy will be done. And there are some more promises. We are then in much less danger of excitement, fear, anger, worry, self-pity, and foolish decisions. We become much more efficient. We do not tire so easily for we are not burning up energy foolishly as we did when we were trying to arrange life to suit ourselves. It works. It really does. This is an ironclad guarantee. It works. From first-hand experience, we can state that two-way prayer has been working in our lives ever since we began a daily quiet time. But what if we don't receive any God-given ideas, emotions, or attitudes? Let us assure you this can happen at any time. But remember, all we have, all we really have, is a daily reprieve contingent upon the maintenance of our spiritual condition. If we don't feel the presence of God, it means we have work to do. Maybe we've taken back our will in some area of our lives, or maybe we haven't made an assess a necessary amends. If this is the case, we take the actions that reconnect us to, the, to our higher power. However, it may be simply that we are focusing on our senses, being aware of what we hear, see, or feel. When we're present, we are exactly where our higher power wants us to be not resenting our past or fearing our future, but instead being content right here, right now. Starting with the second paragraph on page 88, we are told once again that we need our higher power's help. It says, we alcoholics are undisciplined. And how? So we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. But this is not all. There is action and more action. Faith without works is dead. Okay, here's how it works. When we finish our morning quiet time, and we've done our writing, we check what we put on paper. Now, if what we have written is honest, pure, unselfish, and loving, we can be assured that these thoughts are God-directed. 
Conversely, if what we have written down is dishonest, resentful, selfish, or fearful, we can be equally assured these thoughts are self-directed. In the order for two-way prayer to be successful, we must constantly practice being in the presence of God. If we do the work, we will receive the rewards, a life filled with power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction. We want you to know that we take the 11th step on a regular basis. Talking and listening to our higher power has changed our lives, and it will change your life too, if you're willing to practice prayer and meditation daily. Remember, our higher power has given us free will. We're free not to listen to the God-directed messages we receive, but we must be prepared to accept the consequences if we choose not to follow God's guidance. Now, we find that during our period of quiet time, God's grace has quietly entered our souls so that we will have new power and strength which will enable us to do that which we could never do before. We will not be conscious of this happening while we are engaged in this quiet time, but we will notice its powerful effect on us throughout the rest of the day. This does not mean that we will never be troubled during the day, but we will find ourselves winning the struggle against pride, resentment, fear, and anxiety over and over over again, in, especially in situations where those temptations always defeated us before, we will find the proof in our own lives that this kind of meditation works. As we continue doing this every morning for weeks and months and years, we will find ourselves growing incredibly at the spiritual level. Our entire lives will be transformed. Meditating the way the early AA people taught us is a rich and powerful way of making rapid spiritual progress and gaining true happiness and freedom. Now we're going to uh, try to explain this a little bit further. And um, let's see. Okay. It's just this simple. We use a little book we can carry around with us. It's something that I can refer to throughout the day because I can write it down and forget it. But if I keep it with me, I can see what it is. I also keep it short and sweet because, as we said, we are undisciplined. So I write one page, sometimes a little bit more, but mostly I try to keep it to one page. And then, whatever I write down, I look, go down it and see where's my will, where's God's will. And where God's will is, is that's my direction for the day. And sometimes I keep getting the same thing over and over, which means maybe I'm being a little stubborn or it's taking me a little while to learn my lesson. Often being present is there a lot in mind. Be present. And then I save the other side of the page to listen to what my sharing partner has written because sometimes I hear a message that I need to hear from someone else. And it comes to me, you know, my higher powers working through them the same way as I hear things at a meeting. And I also use my book for that. I'll jot down things that I feel are messages I need to hear and abide by, guidance that I need to pay attention to. So we're going to read a couple. Brian, why don't you pick one first? He's going to read one, a sample. I'm just going to show you how, how, how simple it is. You know, I think it's always better to, to show you how to do it and show you what we've written down. And, and uh, you know, we've been doing this for about three or four years now, so it, it took a practice. You know, the first time we did it, we just got a grocery list. You know what I mean? Because that's what's on my mind. I got to make sure I don't remember toilet paper. You know what I mean? I got to make sure I don't remember dog food. Because the dog, dog's getting hungry. And so we just make a list of all the things, shopping lists, and that's kind of how it was for a little while. And then every once in a while, what used to be a hunch gradually, gradually becomes a working part of the mind. You know, sometimes I just carry the pad with me and I'd hear something at a meeting and go, wow, and just start writing it down. You know, knowing that's for me, that's God working through somebody else. So that's why it's important. You can get these pads at the dollar store, Dollar General, you can get three for a dollar. And so anyhow, I'm going to read mine. I was at, um, I was in Payson, Arizona, which is up at about 6,000 feet, and I was at a camp out. And so um, I, uh, I did my, my meditation here, and this is what I got. I got, I feel so dirty. It's because I haven't showered in a couple days and, you know, I need a shower, uh, getting hot out, go for a swim in the lake, pack up truck, stay present, live in the now, live in the moment. It's all we have. Keep an open mind and stay teachable. 
Give love and friendship. Hold on to the peace inside. Always remember the newcomer. Always remember the newcomer and where I came from. Stop judging and comparing self with others. Spiritual progress, not spiritual perfection, and unity and fellowship. Sound pretty good? There's no way of faking it. It's just whatever comes to mind, just write it down. Sometimes I get things, you know, right out of the book and just write it as it's coming to mind. You know, love and tolerance is our code. Whatever, whatever's up here, the idea is to get whatever's up here on paper, trying to capture as many thoughts as you can. You're not going to capture them all, but you can capture some. You know, it's a means of recording. I'll read one that I wrote uh, yesterday. We're on the highway, and I wrote, Yucky, sticky, stinking highway. (laughs) It's unnatural and unhealthy. (laughs) Sitting too long, painful, no air conditioning. Okay, so this is obviously self-will. B and I okay, though, Brian and I. Be positive. Up, there's some God's will. Pray to do great tomorrow. Uh, Take care of self the best I can. Dull countryside. Grateful to live in Arizona. Chant and two-way prayer again. I'm on a mission. Be a willing servant. Know it is a privilege to serve. Be of good cheer. You see how that works? Now, if I didn't, if I didn't do two-way prayer, I'd still be in mind. This gosh darn trip is just beating the heck out of me. But no, <laughs> I get put back in the right space. Get my perspective back when I, when I ask for direction from my higher power. I like to um, read. I got to uh, remember how earlier the last session I talked about Ann Smith and how she used to do it in her home, and I got two of her guidance. And I'm just going to show you how how simple it was, and how how the ideas. You know, writing it in this little pad and how important it was. So I have two. I'm just going to show you the picture and see how much she wrote down. Not very much, right? So I'm going to read them to you. There's two different ones. Um, of course, you know that she was the co-founder's wife. So this is what she wrote. She wrote, group happiness, help to husband. I must change and let Christ run my life. Always self before. Picture changes. Humble to children. Apology patience, no nerves, and love. And so that's just what came to mind, and then she would share this. And then there's another one. Um, Pelton, just a name. I don't know, I can't can't elaborate because I don't know, but it was probably a neighbor or something. And then it says, has guidance failed? Where have you failed? Where God guides, God provides. Witness powerfully, share deeply. Prayer is not begging, but makes it sensitive to receiving God's grace and Mrs. Hammer. So you're just sitting quiet for a couple of minutes and just trying to capture whatever thoughts come to mind. Keep in mind, if you have a specific dilemma that is really hard to deal with right now, please ask a specific question. I'll give you an example. um, Of a few years ago, I'm not sure how many years ago, five years ago maybe, I was... um, my mother was living in New York. She's passed away since, and I was in Arizona. And I felt that I wasn't being a good daughter because I was so far away, even though I called her all the time. And so I asked for guidance of how I could be a better daughter to my mother. And what came to me is to make a promise to her that I would visit her at least every other year and spend as much time as she wanted me you know, to be there. And I didn't think of that until I did that prayer, and I was able to do that and spend some good quality time with her before she passed. But I don't know. I might have just worried about it if I hadn't asked for specific guidance. But we will get specific answers, and they may not come right away when we're doing our writing. Maybe it will just give us awareness to be receptive, you know, to the to the answers, and they may come at a meeting or through a show or something that we're reading or a piece of uh, AA literature. But the point is that this is a a really valuable tool that only takes a few minutes to do, and it can change your life, and it has changed ours. So we hope you'll you'll enjoy trying this today. Any questions? There is a name for this, too. It's called proprioceptive writing. Interesting, huh? Okay, Mike, yes? Yes. 
after we've written it. Don't think about it beforehand. Just let it flow. It's like stream of consciousness, but connecting to our higher power. It's the same idea as ask and you will receive, you know, uh, knock and the door will open. You will always get, you know, a response. So if we share the meeting, all we want to share is what passes for us. No, you can share it all. Because sometimes we don't see it right. Sometimes I will think something is not important, and he may see it as something really important as guidance. So it's good to share it with somebody. Yes? Yeah, yeah, a lot of places do this, uh huh. They get quiet, that's right, uh huh, you get quiet. And it's also something that, now we can be aware of our senses. We don't have to close our eyes. We don't have to get on our knees. You know, this is something we can do anywhere at any time. Instead of, like they said, you know, we don't, we don't want to run for the hills, you know, when things start getting ugly, you know. We want to sit quiet and ask for guidance and direction. Now we're going to take, oh, one more thing. Yeah, I just want to mention a couple things. Um, I just remember back in the third step of, we made a decision to do God's will over self will to turn our thinking and our actions over. And then it said that we have a new director now. You know, in the third step it says we have a new director. We have a new boss. And then in step four it says we're on a different basis. The basis of trusting and relying upon God. Right? And then in step five it says that we're developing a new relationship with our creator. So our relation is, our relationship is that we talk and we listen. And like I said earlier, I always forgot about that listening part. And so now we're going to learn how to, re- how to listen, how to tap into that God conscious within, how to tap into that, listen to that voice within. Um. Okay, we're going to take a five-minute quiet time and practice step 11 and listen to God. We're going to ask him to direct our thinking, so thoughts that come are coming from God. Now, how do we know? the difference between what's coming from God and what's coming from us, we use the four absolutes. Is it honest, pure, unselfish, and loving? It must pass all four absolutes. If it fails one of the liabilities of self-will, which is dishonesty, resentment, and fear, and selfishness, it only has to have one, one liability to fail the guidance uh, that is coming from self, and we're interested in what is passing the four absolutes. So we're going to take a couple minutes here to get paper and pencil, and we're going to have a prayer where uh, Catherine is going to give us a prayer, and then after the prayer there's going to be five minutes of quiet time, and we can practice this meditation. Now, it does say in the big book, you know, in the morning to practice meditation, and in the evening, we practice a meditation. This is our conscious contact with God as we understand Him. So again, we're going to uh, practice step 11. And as we write down our meditation after the five minutes is up, we will share this in the meeting. If you feel comfortable, please share it in the meeting. It's um, it's nice to have some kind of ritual around it where you do a reading or something. Some people like to breathe deeply or have a special place that they sit every day and do this, a quiet place somewhere you feel comfortable, somewhere that you're honoring this, you know, this procedure. Okay. Well, and again, you know, this is a this is a spiritual exercise like everything else. So is prayer. Now. What we like to do uh, one time I was doing my prayer and meditation few years ago and I and I got the the uh, the message or the direction to write what I all I could think of calling it was a pre-prayer prayer, prayer. <laughs> 
something to get me in the right space, you know, so that I wasn't uh, I wasn't off base. And and um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this prayer. And then we're all going to sit quietly and write down whatever comes to mind and, re- and for just two or three minutes. And remember, you can't do this wrong and you can't fake it either. <laughs> it's going to it's just going to happen. It'll be fun. We're going to we're going to uh, hear what some of these uh, responses are that we get. It's really exciting. OK, here is our uh, here's the prayer I wrote. God, during this quiet time. I pray that my writing will reflect that my life is presently being guided by unselfishness, honesty, purity, and love. I pray to now open myself to receive your guidance and direction. I pray for the will to take your direction in a timely manner that I may continue to grow spiritually and experience a profound life of serenity and joy. Amen. Okay, let's do our writing.
Okay, we'll stop there. That was about four minutes. It's a long time when we sit quietly with our higher power, isn't it? It feels good. Well, thank you for doing this exercise with us. We realize that these messages can be very personal and are normally discussed with only your sponsor or sharing partner. However, if you believe the group can benefit from what you have received, we're asking you to share it with us now. In addition, you will be helping those who are still struggling with the 11th step to see how God discloses himself to us. Now, only share what you have written without further explanation. We'll be here all day otherwise. (laughs) And I know it's tempting, but, you know, you'll have a chance to share this with other people in the future. Now, let's keep it simple. I always want to try to keep it simple. Now, who is willing to start us off with what they have written down? After everybody has shared their guidance, we have what we call three-way prayer. Now, this is something you heard the expression, God talks through people. Uh, The three-way prayer is in reference to guidance that you've shared tonight in the meeting that has helped somebody else in the meeting. And that's considered three-way prayer. So, in other words... We're going to share our guidance that we receive from our five-minute meditation. Write it down, and we're going to share it. After we're all done sharing our two-way prayer with God, anybody in the room that has listened to your guidance and has benefited from their guidance is considered three-way prayer, and we encourage you to write that down. So we will share the three-way prayer immediately after we share the guidance from you, your meditation. Hopefully that makes sense. I Again, basically we're going to share our meditation as we write it down on the paper. After we're all done, people in the room who have benefited from your guidance will write that down also. And that's considered three-way prayer. So we encourage you to write down anything that you hear from somebody else, and we'll share that also. And that's called three-way prayer. Okay, at this point, we're going to turn off the tape player, and we're going to take the time to listen to meditation that you've written down in your five-minute quiet time. That's considered two-way prayer. We're also going to take the time to listen to three-way prayer. Now, the three-way prayer is in reference to anything that you've heard from somebody else that has helped you tonight concerning guidance, and we encourage you to write that down also. So again, we're going to take the time to do that. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the tape player. Once we've shared the two-way prayer and listen to the three-way prayer. We'll turn on the tape player and continue with step 12.